Hello everybody and welcome back to the first mid-month update in a while. We've been rather busy with the excitement of the Alonso Hard Fork and also of course the Cardano Summit. But joining me today are a couple of familiar faces. We've got Kevin and we've got Nigel and also a face new to many of you, Jan Muller from the Plutus team. So let's dive straight in. Nigel, as I say, it's been a very busy summer, a very exciting couple of months. Have you guys managed to have a bit of time off? Um, not yet, Tim. Um, we're all cracking on. We're all super busy. We've got had a number of staff across the team take some short breaks. Um, but really, we, we're really moving forward into this new smart contract era. So uh, post the Alonzo hard fork, we are now doing a lot of work in terms of optimization, um, looking at performance tweaks and moving it forward. We're also working with our SPOs um, so that they can uh, make sure that they upgrade their nodes for our latest maintenance upgrade, which is going to happen in a couple of weeks. Beyond that, it's all about building out the smart contract ecosystem. So it's supporting our partners to build our, our dApps. And from that position, it's, you know, what do we have to do for that? It's about thinking about what, what our extra pieces of infrastructure are that need to be in place. So the key milestones that are in front of us is we have the maintenance upgrade uh, towards the end of October. After that, following that, after a few weeks, we're looking to basically launch our Plutus application backend, our PAB. And this is our crucial um, linchpin that Kevin and Jan will talk in to more detail about that will actually support our partners when they're actually delivering their dApps. Let's dive into that in a moment, but perhaps before we do, Kevin, can you maybe just give us a bit of an overview of, of the overall Plutus framework, just so we can set some context and where the PAB sits within that? Absolutely, Tim. So let me give you the, uh, the big picture. F fundamentally, there are two main things that we're considering as part of the uh, Plutus development experience. There are the things that are running off-chain, that is the things that are running on a user's or developer's machine. And then there are the things that actually run on the blockchain, the on-chain components. So if we, if we start at the top, uh, then a developer will be producing a Plutus application. The application is what the uh, user will be using. When the application is developed, it's compiled through the Plutus transaction compiler into something we call Plutus Core, which is the version of the script which is actually executed onto the, on the blockchain, on the Cardano blockchain. Now, that's running in the Cardano node, but to get there, what we have to do is we have to interface the uh, Plutus uh, to the ledger layer. So we need to make sure that uh, the ledger can call the Plutus script, that it can pass in the parameters that the Plutus script uh, needs, and uh, that it can safely execute the script on the chain. So the ledger is the key to making this work. There's been quite a lot of work going on uh, into the Alonso hard fork uh, to make that happen, to make sure that everything is done safely, securely, uh, and efficiently. And then on the other side, on the off-chain side, in addition to the pure Plutus application, uh, there's also some library code that has been written. So the set of Haskell libraries that have been written to allow the Plutus application to interface to various wallet and ledger capabilities to so to these parameters to the content of transactions etc and that then needs to go through the plutus application backend that nigel's just just mentioned linking through the wallet interface the wallet backend interface which then connects up to the to the node so that at a very high level is what we're doing uh, right at the moment tim and most of this is very complicated setup most of this we have in place. It's just one or two small things that we're working on right now. And Jan, let's bring you in here because obviously the PAB is one of those elements that still needs to be fully integrated. Perhaps you can just tell us a little bit more. What is the PAB exactly? Yeah, so in the UTXO model, we have some uh, infrastructure, some off-chain infrastructure that builds the transactions that actually uh, move the, the apps along that we have. Um, and this off-chain infrastructure is um, quite complicated because it needs to look at the ledger state. It needs to pick some information from the ledger. It needs to uh, put all this together 
to build a transaction with the right pieces of data in the, in the right place. And the PAB is a, a Haskell library that makes it easier to write this off-chain infrastructure. And it helps uh, with building the UT UTXO transactions in two ways. One is the, the read path, so getting information from the chain, reacting to events that happen uh, on the blockchain. And the other one is the, the write path, where we actually construct the transactions that run the Pluto scripts. And both of them together are available in the in the PAB. And it's all a, a single, like a Haskell library. You're using the same language for writing the off-chain infrastructure and for the, the on-chain scripts that you have. And is the PAB actually required to deploy a DAP on, uh, on Cardano? It's not strictly required. So it is possible to run your DAPs with just using Haskell for the, for the validators only, for the on-chain code. Um, and then you would replace the off-chain work that the PAP does uh, with Cardano CLI, uh, essentially. So you would have to construct your own transaction. You have to pick out the UTXOs you want to spend and so on. And you use Cardano CLI to put together all this information and, and build the transactions. And that's uh, what some of the, the, the dApps that are out there already, what, what they're doing is uh, using Cardano CLI for the transactions. And the PAB is available already, isn't it? It is available on a mock chain, as it were. Yeah, so we have a, a mock chain, which is an, an emulated Alonzo network. And on that, the full functionality of the PAB can be tested and used. And you can start writing your apps. You can write test scenarios. Um, there's a property testing framework available that you can use for some more uh, assurance about your, your contracts. And that's already available. And then the, the read path that I mentioned earlier, so getting information from the chain, that already works for the testnet. Um, so we've integrated that bit of the uh, of the pub. And the thing that's, le that's left to do, what we're currently working on is the, the right path where we put together the transactions that we send to the wallet backend um, and then eventually to the chain. So Jan, when, uh, when integrated, how will the mainnet be different to the mock chain pub? So uh, for, for builders of dApps, it's just a change in the configuration files that they use to, to start the pub. So uh, you can say it should work on the mock chain, on the test net, or connect to the mainnet, but it doesn't require any change to the actual code of the, to the Haskell code that you wrote. So, so Jan, I guess a relatively smooth path once things are fully integrated into the mainnet for, for dApp developers. But Nigel, this is the integration work that's going on at the moment, isn't it? Um, absolutely right, Tim. So this is our critical release uh, before the end of the year. It's getting the, the Pluto application backend to talk to our wallet backend, or AKA our Cardano wallet. So with the Cardano wallet, we have to expose the other half of the Pluto transactions that are given to it. So it's about making sure we've got a balancing endpoint, making sure that actually we've got a signing um, endpoint and also coin selection. There's a few other bits like fees and collateral that all need to be packaged up together. Now, that's now been done. We've actually exposed all those things and we are working really hard to get the PAB integrated against it. And as any engineer would know, this is the critical point. So as you integrate, you find problems and basically we just keep iterating around as we kind of fix each different problem that arises. Whilst we're, we're integrating this, we're also building a test um, DAP. So the test DAP we've got is for an NFT marketplace. And it, it, it will go hand in hand with our PAB release. So it's our way of fundamentally testing this integration end to end. So we've got like a little trading DAP for NFTs, which should be a lot of fun. And it means then when we actually get the PAB out, we've tested the whole of it as we, uh, as we deliver it. So that end to end journey as it were. And it's also interesting to see this past week, we've actually seen our first community NFT store with a, with a wallet integration, which used a slightly different route as well. So things are definitely moving there in the community as well. Um, but Nigel, when this uh, integration has happened, what will developers be able to do with the PAB? They basically complete their round trip on the dApps. Um, at the moment, a lot of them have got their front end. They've got a lot of logic behind that and their back end that's working. Uh, some of them have got it, you know, most, in fact, all of them have got it working on the, uh, the, the local environment and they're starting to build things in our test environment. Now they can't completely complete the round trip for any of the transactions that they do, unless we've got this wallet integration, because it, everything needs that wallet integration, not just to finance any kind of transaction, but also to make sure that we're signing things properly from an, an authorization point of view. 
Um, and that goes across anything that we're doing, whether it's the NFT marketplace, it's Oracle, it's DEXs that we're building or, or anything else that people are actually inventing. Once we've got that whole round trip, we give them that platform and the plumbing that they need to actually complete their, their DAP um, in full. And Nigel, I believe you're tracking quite a number of projects across Discord and across the Essential Repo and offering some kind of support and advice where you can as well. Yeah, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good stuff. Um, and we've got a really clever way of doing it to make sure that everyone's got their own Discord channel. That, they, that gives them a key uh, link into our own Plutus engineers. Uh, we've got our Plutus flying squad that also looks, reviews and fixes issues that they raise. So it's a proper community effort to help them get their dApps over the line um, and to, to help uh, people that are actually, you know, invested to be building businesses on Kadano as we go into the future. Um, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. So we're pretty confident we're going to see some uh, some more dApps on Cardano within the next month or two? I, I think before the end of the year, we'll see a healthy selection of dApps coming out. I think we're going to see a whole cross-section, some things that will be on the test net for people to play with using test data, and some people launching onto the main net as a, as a first uh, shot at it. Now, I don't want to get too excited. I am certain that you know we're going to get some good things out uh, before the end of the year, but I think a lot of people will make sure that they do it in a sensible way. So the things that do come out might have an initial sort of beta release with slightly restrictive functionality as they test the market. And that's the kind of thing you've got to expect. You know, this, you know, we've got to make sure we build solid foundations in this ecosystem and that people are actually rolling things out in stages. Um, but there's, there's a lot of good things to be looking forward to. Great. So, uh, Kevin, let me maybe just finish off with you, because Nigel talks about building foundations. Obviously, the Alonzo hard fork built the foundations for Plutus with the integration with the node. It also is really the beginnings of a, a smart contract network. And I know you and the team are also doing a lot of work around looking at how the network is performing, where it needs optimizing, where it needs tuning, etc. Perhaps you can just give us a bit of an update of where we are with that. Of course, what Alonso has done is introduce a complete step change in the kinds of transactions uh, that we're having to process. So we're monitoring uh, very, very carefully what's going on in the network. We're keeping an eye on how the system is behaving. Uh, but we're also, uh, the benchmarking and QA teams are, have been doing a huge amount of work just investigating uh, what uh, the will happen as we start to roll out the uh, dApps that uh, Nigel has just been uh, talking about. So the situation at the moment is the, the network is performing well, it's performing as uh, expected. Uh, we're obviously seeing some high demand around uh, specific events, things like NFT drops, and it's fantastic to see the network being used uh, by people to do, uh, to do things like this. It's, it's great to see the hard work we've put in uh, actually coming to fruition. Generally, um, as I was saying, the network is behaving uh, as we expect. Uh, it's designed in such a way that even if the network uh, becomes extremely heavily loaded, there might be a little bit of slowdown, uh, but the system will still keep working as expected. We've measured it under some pretty extreme conditions, uh, 44 times the possible load. And uh, as, I, as I'm sure you're aware from other real world situations, typically systems don't behave very well under those situations. Um, banking systems will go down, major manufacturers may fail to make their product launches, etc. But with Cardano, things will just keep working. They, it might slow down a bit, it might take a little longer to process a few transactions, you might have to retry a few times, but everything is just going to keep going through, the network will keep working, and as the load uh, reduces, the system will just pick up again and go back to its normal state. So it's a very nice, a very elegant uh, way of dealing with load situations. But there's still work we can do to um, optimise what's going on, I said we're monitoring very carefully how the load is developing. We have a lot of parameters um, that, that are available to us to increase the capacity in the network um, as necessary. And we're keeping an eye on what's actually happening with a view to when we need to throw those switches. Various things we can do. Uh, we can increase transaction sizes 
For example, uh, we can look at increasing the number of execution units that are available to Plutus scripts, the amount of memory we allocate to Plutus scripts, all kinds of detailed uh, changes that we want to that we can make. And obviously what we want to do is to make those changes gradually in line with the actual demand. So we're meeting the real needs that people are placing on us. We're talking to uh, a number of uh, DApp developers about their actual requirements. Part of the benchmarking input that I described earlier is precisely to say to the benchmarking team, well, when we see these uh, prospective loads that people are talking about, how does that impact uh, the overall system? Uh, how can we uh, guarantee that the system will continue to be resilient, it will continue to meet all the competing demands uh, that we're placing on it? Because obviously what we're trying to do here is to build a system that is going to last not just for the immediate future, but indefinitely. So we're looking here at setting up the basis for something that is going to persist forever and is going to work well forever. So in the short term, parameter changing, medium term, we're looking at various types of um, optimization. So we're looking at uh, moving the storage out of memory, the ledger storage out of memory onto SSD or disk. We're looking at various compression techniques uh, and we're looking at various types of optimizations, optimizing the way the Plutus interpreter works, etc. So all kinds of things we can do uh, to improve the system throughput, uh, to reduce the execution cost, and uh, to improve how the system is behaving. So don't think that where we are today is where we will be in future. Many, many things, many, many tweaks that we can do. We've got lots of ideas about how we do that. So the point is that the network has been designed to be highly adjustable and scalable. We're at the start of the uh, Plutus uh, era. Further down the line, we also have uh, some tricks up our sleeves, like level two solutions, the Hydra solution will allow us to offload and parallelize a lot of computations. We've got plenty of room for growth in there, Tim. That's great news, sir. Thank you, Kevin, for that. So, look, gentlemen, thank you very much for that. That's it for today for the uh, the mid-month update. But remember, we have Cardano 360 coming up. It's every last Thursday of the month. So we hope to see you there. We're going to focus on the summit this month. An awful lot to talk about there. Some recaps and also some exclusive content that we couldn't quite squeeze in to the hundred or so hours we did manage to squeeze in. So until then, thank you very much.